Now, I'm going to show you this fly here. Now, this is a basically an old pattern, it's a, well, it's an old style of an tied parachute flies many years ago. What I would do is I'd use feather wing for the post rather than use, which we didn't have to be honest with you, I didn't have any para post or poly pro or any of these, or even CDC. So we just used what we had, and in this case, I used just the feather wing. And this is a starling wing, and for a a basically uh, an upright winged dry floating down the river. Uh, this was a great fly. It did extremely well for me. Uh, you can see it's quite flat. And I mean, you see the duns especially coming down. They're quite the wings are flat, and this is what this was to represent. And it worked the treat. And the more you fished it, the better looking it got. The more rougher it looked, uh, the better it fished. Now, the hook I'm going to use is this one here. This is from Fuller Mill. It's the it's basically the ultimate dry and black nickel, size 16. Uh, it's more like a 14 to be honest with you, it's great. Uh, in the old sizes it's just a, this would be a size, more a size 14 than a 16. But anyway, it's ideal size for the olives at the moment, so. Thread I'm going to be using, I'm just going to use the uni thread. This one here, AO and olive. Now I've just waxed it, so I'm going to put thread down to the point of the hook, remove the waste. Then when you come back up halfway, that will give me the position for the wing. Now the wing is just some starling. This is starling primaries. A nice soft fibre. I'm just going to bring it out. I'm going to rough, just bringing out the, the tips so they're all lined up. Enough so that I can fold, at least get fold it once or twice uh, so that I get a nice the thickness. Uh, so what I do is, as I say, bring them out so the tips are lined up, tear it away. Bring it together. Let's check. You can see the ends there. So I say it's a wee rough fly, but it works. It's lots of treat. So then we fold it. Oh, well, that one's came away. So what I'm going to do is come back in. Just take your time. Then we fold it in in itself. Once, and there's the second one. Twice. So there's your tips. Now they're lined up. So basically, what we do is tie this forward. So we're looking at at least a length of the hook. Just pinch and loop that on the top. Nice and tight, three or four turns. Just bring these fibres back together. And then we're going to trim this at the back at an angle. So basically an angled cut from the back. Just like that. And what that'll do is basically give you a taper in the body. Now, I want to lift the wing a wee bit. So just bring the thread to the front. Three or four turns in front of it so it kind of lifts it or posts it up. And then up to the words of the back, nice and tight, down in these waist ends. And you'll see the taper there as we head down. And we stop just before the bend. Now, for the tail of the fly, I'm using a, a dyed olive. There you go. This is just a, just a Chinese cock hackle I've got, just a long fibre. Just using these for the tail, just bring them 90 degrees from the stem, tear it off. Looking for at least the length of the hook for a tail. Tie that on the top with a turn. Now what I do is keep a hold of the tips of the tail, come underneath with a turn of the thread, pull towards the eye of the hook and then put a turn on top. And basically what that does, it just opens the fibre and locks them up. So then what we can do is take away the waste. Trim that away, and you miss one. It's always one you miss. Just, it's the same colour as the thread, so it's quite hard to see. Now, for the body, I'm going to use... This is a peacock eye, which I've dyed olive. Now, I've removed a lot of the fine hair by using bleach uh, for about 15 minutes, or to go 10 to 15 minutes. And that will remove most of the fibre. But then the remains, what I do then, I just use my nail. Now, just take your time and remove. You don't need a huge amount. Now, it's not. Sometimes that happens, so don't worry about it. It just means you've lost one. Just go back and get another one. Just catch the quill a certain way and it just tears, so don't worry about it. So come back in here and get some more. Just take your time. Now, you could use a rubber. You just got to be patient when your time flies. 
this does happen with, with natural fibre and you're happy with that and I'm happy with that so to catch it in what I'm going to do is put an angled cut into it marks my thread so I've got the grip just offer it to the side of the hook come round with the turner thread and not really up now I'm going to stop about a mil and a half or so from the wing now to protect the quill all I used to do was quite simple a couple of fibres there looks like I've caught the thread a wee bit just going to take these out first sometimes you catch the pointed hook so you get you catch the odd fibre of the thread now to protect the quill I'd wind over some varnish and this is just the Venier's clear varnish I'm using you could use super glue obviously now uh, it's obviously a wee bit stronger but that's what we used so then what I do is then wind up over the varnish now, not too much, it's just enough to stick it. Get to the wing, just two or three turns to secure. Trim away. Bit of the thread there. Now the wing there, just ignore the wing at this point. I've got some squirrel dub dyed olive. I only need a wee drop just at the back, just to tidy things up. Just hide your thread turns a wee bit. Now, I'm using here the Hebert Miner. Got a decent piece of hackle here. And don't be shy with the length of the fibre. Now, what I'm going to do is bear some of the stem. Now, this was a a medium done which I've dyed yellow. Just going to take away some of the fibres so we've got the stem. I'm going to tie it with a turn at the back of the wing. Just going to catch this in. Turn at the back, lift the wing out the road. There's the, if you can see the stem, and then come to the front with the thread, tying that in, and bring the thread right up to the wing. Now, wax your thread, and then at the base of the wing, what I'm going to do is put in four or five turns just to stiffen it up and then up with the thread in front then using your hackle come round support the wing as you come round just hold it get enough hackle to float the fly nice and tight now as I come down this side I like this the hackle on my side so I lift the hackle fibres out of the way there's the hackle stem, just pinch tight, come round with the thread turn, secure it in, and then basically trim away the excess. You touch a wax on your thread, again lift, fibres out the way, come back up, and then get some more of the dubbing, just to tidy up that, the thorax. It's a wee rough fly, that for lots of fish over the years in this fly, and it it's definitely, if you can tie it, give it a go. If you don't like using the feather and the wing, use just whatever you have. Can you just say CDC, Parapost, anything like that. I'm just checking there. Now, to finish off, we drop varnish onto the thread. I see when you cast this out, the more you fish it, the better it looks. So, we'll varnish onto the thread there and then what finish. Show me a thread. Okay, I'm going to lift the fibres back down because I've obviously pushed them back. There's your wing. Now I'm going to brush the wing. I'm going to use the brush to rough it up. So I'm just going to blend the fibres with the brush. Now as you basically use the fly, the more that that happens, then you get more of a a, a wing-like shape. So I'm going to trim away some of these fibres. I say when it's out in the water it actually at least looks like the real fly. Uh, it's brilliant, it's a really good pattern. Simple fly to tie. It's a good way of using up some of these wider feathers that you can use them obviously in wets and stuff, but it's lovely and soft the styling and you can use it up and then just roll it and then brush it together. Uh, as I say, the more you fish it the better look it it gets. Um, 
Anyway, there we are. It's a kind of feather wing parachute. It's a quilled, it's a good spring olive type pattern that does very well at this time of the year. Um, kind of different sizes, different sort of colours. You're not a fan.